All right, well, we got the radiator from Ishimoto here. We have the cooling fans here, and we're about to, uh, you know, see what they look like. Off we go to the fans now. Let's get it. Come on. Perfect. So let's see. Oh, nice. Oh, it comes with the hardware too. Awesome. Right. Let's get this out of here. It's actually really nice. Really bolted in there. Already got the seams and everything in there. Really nice actually. So these are their 1150C FM fans. Um, so combined, they uh, do around um, 2300. So it's actually pretty good CFM for what I need. Um, this really should do you good prior to like the seven, 800 range. Um, after that, then that's when I would push for, um, you know, something I won't say better than Mishimoto, but I'm saying like higher CFM. Um, I'm not sure if Mishimoto has any higher trims that you could upgrade because you know you could unbolt these you know it looks like a little 10 right here so pretty sure you could upgrade at most you'd have to do some wiring because these actually do come with the plugs which is actually a really good thing it makes it a lot easier to plug it in but um but yeah i would definitely recommend these and we'll get on to installing them now so i got the radiator in unfortunately i wasn't able to record much of it which is pretty much going in like factory if you don't have a turbo um other than that it was pretty simple it dropped right in all you have to do is make sure you pull off these little things off of the old ones 
they go right there, the little like rubber grommets, you won't miss them. Well, it's one on each side and um, all you do is just put them on the bottom and then it falls right in. Um, ignore the, my chicken scratch for wire. I had a little issue. My fans don't want to kick on. So I just made this little chicken scratch really quick. Um, we'll get that resolved when we take it to get tuned. Other than that, uh, the car is good. It has gone through about one or two heat cycles. Um, with the system in and fully done up, we got a little zip ties on here. Just make sure these don't pop off. And we got, of course, as you can see, hoses ran and wrapped on that one. Soon, I might be wrapping this to make it look a little bit cleaner. And on top of that, um, basically for intake air temps, we wanna keep that as low as we can, of course. And other than that, the car's pretty much uh, set to go to the dyno. We just need to get valve lash done. That's one thing we do definitely need. It's definitely ticking on cylinders three and four. Other than that, pretty much it. Uh, we might wrap the downpipe um, I have a friend that actually has red downpipe wrap. He will be giving it to me. I'm thinking about just using that for now. Um, honestly, I think it'll look good. I want to try out the looks, see how it looks. Um, that'll be done in a little bit. Other than that, the car is pretty much set to go. Uh, we got all the piping and everything put in. We have the new headlights on. I still got the plastic on them because when we drive it to the tuner, I do not want to have lug bugs going all over them. If you're from Florida, you understand. Uh, and just other states, but you understand if you deal with love bugs. Thankfully, we have no fuel leaks. We have no, oh, excuse me. We have no oil leaks and we have no vacuum leaks. I do believe something is going on with the filler neck on the, um, you know, by the O-ring that connects to the tank or the filler neck itself. I believe there's something's happening back there it's a small leak when I put fuel in the car, but it doesn't leak when I run. Um, so something happening back there, I'll figure it out. Um, if not, I'll take it to the tuner and they'll be able to put it up on a lift and figure out exactly what's going on. Other than that, we are set. I do need to modify my catch can lines a little bit longer than needed and we're good to go.